In this lesson, you're going to learn how to wrap up the network we built so far into a digital asset, a single node that can function as a tool for other artists. So we're going to move the platonic solid a little bit off to the side, and we're going to select all the other nodes, everything except the platonic solid. Once we have that, we'll go to the Asset menu, and we'll go New Digital Asset from Selection. We're going to give that the name Brickify. And we're going to make sure the library we save to is in our project. So dollar hip, and then there's an HDA folder for uh, Houdini Digital Asset, and we're going to save in there. This keeps everything local for the work that we're doing. So as you can see, it's already sort of collapsed everything into a single node. So you have the an input, which is being fed by the platonic solid. You have the subnetwork, and then you have the this panel that's asking us to turn this into a digital asset. So right now it's just a subnet, but once you press accept here, uh, we turn it into a digital asset. And this opens up the edit property type properties window. First thing we're going to go to basic, and we're going to say uh, minimum input zero, so it doesn't have to be input, maximum one, press apply. We're then going to just, we'll just rename this just so we can re rec recognize it, but it's not, that name's less important than the asset name itself. So what we want to do now is build up an interface for this. So we're going to double click to go dive back in and we're going to start promoting parameters to this digital asset. So we're going to start with the first switch, the switch that goes between the, the input geometry uh, and the rubber toy. So we go to the parameter pane and we bring the select input um, parameter down. Now once we have that, um, we can press apply. And if we right click on where it says brick asset right there and we go parameters, uh, parameters, we can bring up a floating window which shows us what the interface for that node looks like. So it just gives us a chance to watch this while we're working away. So right now the same select input uh, interface that we have up above is now on our asset. And if we go to here, we can click, yes, there we go. We go between the rubber toy and the teapot, the platonic solid. So the first thing we'd like to do is maybe change this into something else. So maybe it would be better to be, let's just give it a name. So we're going to go shape is the name of the parameter and shape is the name, the, the proper name. We're going to use it as a menu and the two menu options are going to be zero. The first menu option is going to be the rubber toy. Enter and then one will be a custom shape. So that's why you left the platonic solid out of this because by being outside uh, we can plug other things into the asset later and it'll be a custom shape. And we press apply and you'll see that that's changed. And if we push this out of the way just for a second we can say custom shape and rubber toy. Perfect. So that parameter works. Now what's neat is you'll notice that we're building an interface for this without writing code. There's a whole, Houdini's all set up for an artist to build their own tools using this methodology. We're going to go to the second switch node. This is the one that changes between color, the red color and the texture map. And what we're going to do is, just like we did before, we're going to go give it a name. So look and look. And we're going to again do a menu with zero being a color and one being the texture map. Okay, perfect. Now once we have that, we can uh, press apply if we want to see that on the interface. And again, we can just quickly say, okay, we're going to the color red, we're going to the texture map, there we go. Now one of the things is when you do something like this, the question is what is the default? And right now the default is texture map. We're going to change that to zero and apply. That way color comes in as the default. You can change that later if you want. Now we're going to drag the actual color parameter over. So the people at the top level will actually be able to change the color on the color node and press apply. So everything we're promoting up um, becomes available to artists as they work. And you'll see that everything we don't promote up ultimately will get locked down. We're also going to bring over that texture map uh, parameter 
which currently the default is the is the low res. We're going to change that to mandrel.pick because we know it's already always available, sort of a default Houdini thing. And there we go. So right now, if we go from the color, the texture map, we're getting the mandrel uh, or the color. And we can always assign the, the toy low res later, but for now, this is this works well. Now, once we have that, uh, we're going to go to the color, and we're going to put in some conditions. So, if it's set to a certain value, you won't want to see the color. So, if the look doesn't equal zero, then hide it. And the same thing is if the look isn't one, disable it. Press apply. And you'll see there we go. So when color's on, texture map's disabled. When texture map's on, color's disabled. So that just creates a, a nice little um, user experience detail to the asset. Let's press accept, and there we go. We've got our, our asset ready to go. So this is available there, and if we go back up, you'll see the interface on top of that node, and that can be used to manipulate that. And so this is a file that's saved on disk, and now we can lock that, uh, save the changes, and if we were to double click back into it, you'll see that it, you the artist would not have access to the details inside. They would only have access to the parameters up at the top. And you can actually lock it even further so they can't even see this network. But uh, for now, uh, we're in good shape to go test this asset and see if it works on another piece of geometry.